Gary Wagner now joins us ahead of non-farm payrolls. Gary, good to have you back. My pleasure, my pleasure as always, and it's great to be back after a uh, short hiatus, as you put it off. So, Gary, the last time we spoke, gold was trading near four-year lows. It's obviously come up a lot since then, with a lot of volatility in between. What do you make of what we're seeing in the gold market these days, Gary? Well, that's really a two-part question of volatility and coming off of the low. First, to address the volatility, what really surprised me the most, and we do have a, a thinning or a declining volume, of course, as we are between Thanksgiving and the New Year Christmas slash holidays. So as the uh, volume diminishes, of course, it's much more sensitive and takes a lot less to move the market. The one thing that I found extremely interesting was uh, after the Thanksgiving weekend, the market began to trade in Europe, which would be Sunday for us, but began to trade in Europe and actually was up at, at its hiatus or at, at its height about $35. It starts trading in New York and then plunges down $40. Now I've seen gold have an $80 range, uh, but typically when you see a $50 decline one day, I've seen it have a $50 rise the next, but not in the same day. And it just shows you how much emphasis each individual market, meaning Hong Kong, London, Australia, New York have. And in this case, we saw a real, uh, not so much a disconnect, but a real change in sentiment as the markets moved into New York. And that to me was unusual. The second part of the question that you've asked me is coming off of the lows. And there's absolutely no doubt we've had a small little rally I believe that it might be technically based, but we've had a small rally. As the market came down, it touched a intraday low of 1141. When we look at the previous low, which was 1131, we now have a higher low. We do not yet have a higher high though. And what do you think is driving the gold market right now? Would you say it's more the technicals or the fundamentals? Well, you know, when we look at the market, if we were talking two or three weeks ago, we talked about the high correlation between a strong U.S. dollar, a strong equities markets, and weak gold. We witnessed that as gold kind of plunged back down to those lows at about 1241. But if we look at the activity this week, we've had the dollar, which has now climbed above 89, so it's a new high, I believe a two or maybe even a three-year high, and we've got the equities markets now approaching 18,000. We're just shy of that by a couple of hundred points. So we've had the equities fairly strong, but definitely not down. We've had the dollar stable to higher, and, and at the same time, we've got gold moving higher. So there's a basic disconnect in some of the fundamentals that we have been looking at as uh, correlations between what we expect gold to do. That, to me, is an interesting scenario. And that's why, in terms of fundamentals, we have the ECB right now announcing that they're going to try, or Draghi has announced that he wants to have some more quantitative easing and he is citing how effective that was for the U.S., that on a fundamental basis should be bullish for gold. At the same time, we've got oil, which uh, as of yesterday dipped below $67 a barrel. And of course, that typically would put, um, uh, when you have lower gold, of course, you're going to have uh, typically lower gold. And so we're not seeing direct correlations as we have in the past. And for that reason, my sense is, what we're witnessing is a technically driven market really based on very, very low volume, which increases the volatility or the sensitivity of the moves. All right, Gary. Now, before we get to your insert, I just want to remind viewers that we recently launched a daily commentary with you, Hawaii 60, that is posted every day at 6 p.m. on Kitco.com. So I invite viewers to check it out. But tell us a little bit about what you explain on a daily basis. Yes. Well, what we've tried to do is, is to have a, a daily presence with Kitco. And it's a, a written commentary uh, that typically it comes out, as you said, at approximately 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And it's really a recap of the day. I will have maybe one technical chart in there. But we're really looking at the fundamentals. And what I'm trying to do is give our viewers, our readership, really a rounded view where I'm focusing a little bit more on the fundamentals in our daily commentary. And of course, our insert is predominantly technically based. And this way, we can cover all the corner, so to speak. All right, Gary, on that note, what have you brought us today? Well, you know, it's been quite a while, so I'm going to update our viewers in terms of what I'm looking at at current support and resistance levels. And 
update the forecast that I've had, of course, we're really going to save the meat of that for our technical outlook, which will be out in, I believe, a couple of weeks. All right, let's get to your insert. You know, it's been a little while since we've last visited. In fact, our last chart this insert happened at around the beginning of November. And as a matter of fact, during that period, we were deeply still entrenched in this dramatic downtrend, which took the market to this new low of roughly 1131. Now, since that point, if we take a look at this chart, and this is a half a day chart, 720 minute chart, standard candlestick format, the one thing that we can make is that we have had, although choppy, we've had a defined uptrend from this low at 1131. Now, if we take a look at this low at 1131, the market comes up, it does not make a new high, but as it moves back down, it does make a higher low from the previous low. So unless we really see this high, and the high is around, call it uh, 1255, 1254, unless that high is taken out, I do believe that right now, we are in a period of consolidation in which we are trading in a narrowly defined range. Now, within that range, so we've seen some extreme volatility, and I draw your attention to uh, this most recent high here as the market comes up and tracks just at around, I think it would be about 1208 because that's where we've pegged uh, a current resistance area at, and from there came down and made this dramatic low. This activity right in here, let's go ahead and box that up, but this activity right in here occurred just following uh, our Thanksgiving weekend here in the United States. And what really defined the extreme volatility that we saw was the fact that this market traded all in one day to down $35, $40, and that's this particular candle right here as it was trading in Australia, Hong Kong, and wrapping around the world, of course, into London. It was trading lower, but once it hit New York, it dramatically had that pivotal turnaround. So we saw a market go from down about $35 to close up about $40. I believe it hit a high, an intraday high of about $12. 21. Now, in terms of my current levels of support and resistance, and this would be, of course, more of a short-term view of the market, we have absolute resistance at 1225. That's based on the 76% retracement. The retracement is simply drawn from this high at 1254.49, and then this low at 1131. And so when we do that, we define this particular level as a real serious level of resistance currently in the market. And we have seen the market track almost to this high, but I believe it was just shy, as I said, around 1221. Now, as we get closer to uh, our Christmas and New Year's holiday though, because we're now in December, I would expect us to have one in increased sensitivity, meaning that the volume is going to decrease so it takes less of a contract size to really move the market. So we're going to have increased volatility, but I also believe that unless we break out of this defined range, and the range that I'm talking about is 25, 12.25 on the high, or call it 11.41, that's the most recent low, or even 31. Until we break out of this range, what we are seeing are levels of support and resistance, but they're very, very short term, because although short term, we have this defined uptrend moving off of the bottom, as you'll see in a second, when we move to a longer term chart, of course, a case can be made both for a bullish as well as a bearish model. And it really becomes clear when we take a look at a longer term study, this being a three day chart, it's absolutely clear that we did in fact break below this triple bottom right in here. But the other fact that is true is we had a quick recovery and are currently trading just above that point. In terms of our current Elliott Wave model, it is still forecasting a potential bearish scenario in which we'll see this final fifth wave move to 
as low as 1080. And the real question is, is when we hit these bottoms at 1131, would that be a truncated fifth wave or will we see that market continue to move lower? In terms of a bullish model, when we take a look at the most recent uh, decline itself and we take a look at the longer term Fib retracement, which would, of course, look at the market moving from 700 all the way up to 1900, we do get a 61% retracement that falls at 1141, which is just about the low that we received on this most recent decline. So there can be a case in terms of a model that would say that we're looking at a potential bottom or end of this corrective period. And there is another model, of course, that would look at a little bit more decline, but not all that much. I think we've weathered the, uh, the most of it, so to speak. We will, of course, explore in great detail our outlook for 2015, and we're going to be doing a special episode. And just as I mentioned in the interview, we do now have a daily written commentary for those that want a little bit more information from me. It is called Hawaii 60. Typically comes out at six o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and it will give you really a good sense or the fundamentals that we're currently looking at. That comes out Monday through Thursday at six o'clock, and of course on Fridays. Please continue to look for our series of Chart This. Of course, for more information, please just go to thegoldforecast.com and there you can see the archived commentary and versions of the gold forecast as well as Hawaii 6.0, which is available for recap under the archives at kitco.com. Again, my short-term view of the market and the congestion that I believe we're currently in. As always, thanks so much, Gary. Thank you so very much. And I want to wish all of our viewers at Chart This a great weekend and prosperous investing and trading next week. We'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. And thanks for watching this edition of Chart This with Gary Wagner. You can email us any comments or questions at newsfeedback at kitco.com. Have a great weekend.